So I have always seen Two Trees as more of an accessories company. In fact, I actually didn't even know Two Trees manufactured their own printers until I was contacted for this review. We have work to do. And when I was originally sent the specifications for the SK-1, I was damn near positive there was no way they could follow through with the advertised claims. But for once, just one single time, finally since Bamboo Lab released the X1 Carbon nearly two years ago, we have a printer that is nearly perfect. So lately I've been filming fewer dedicated reviews on printers and I've been filming more discussion topics, but given the tremendous results that this thing showed me, I just needed to do it justice. So yes, this is a dedicated review, and yes, besides the X1 Carbon, the SK-1 is without a doubt the best printer that I have in my studio. In fact, where the X1 Carbon is lacking, the SK-1 actually picks up some slack. Now, I don't have a P1P, but I would be remiss if I didn't say that the possibility existed for the SK-1 to be a better product. And yes, I realize how bold of a statement that is. So I'm gonna stop yapping and I'm gonna start rapid firing the technical specifications so I can then move on to my printing experience. Actually, before I tell you the specs, I wanna yap about PCBWay because you guys have obviously never heard of them. The great thing about PCBWay is they don't only print standard materials. You can also print peak, ASA, or even stainless steel and titanium. Now, in order to provide the highest quality service prior to printing, PCBWay is actually gonna perform a full model analysis of the file you uploaded. That will ensure when when your prints arrives, it's going to be exactly as you envisioned it. What are you waiting for? If you want to learn more, check the link in the description below. And now let's get back to the SK-1. So the SK-1 is a 256 millimeter cube build volume with a custom enclosure slated for mid Q1 of next year. These motors are marketed to push the printer at 700 millimeters per second at 20,000 millimeters per second squared acceleration. But during my testing, I only sliced files at 600 millimeters per second. I can happily report though that Clipper was reporting 600 millimeters per second, although those were probably on the travel moves. And admittedly, I did no flow rate testing because I was only printing at 80 micron layer heights, which were basically capping out at 10 or 12 millimeters cubed per second. And Two Trees has opted for a bamboo cloned hot end that can reach up to 300 degrees Celsius. On the Z axis, you're gonna find a three point motion system, all of which are individually motor controlled, and two of those points are riding along linear rails. And with the side mounted filament holder and the filament runout sensor integrated directly into the hot end, it seems like Two Trees might be the only company that's actually listening to the community. So the included 4.3 inch color touch display is running a completely in-house developed firmware. And in my testing, the screen is very responsive and offers a significantly better experience than the other competitors on the market. I will admit it doesn't look as good as the X1 Carbon or the K1 series displays. However, it feels so much better to operate. My workflow with this firmware feels so much smoother, though it really doesn't even matter because thank goodness Two Trees has given us a fully unlocked clipper experience with Fluid installed by default. And if you're still not happy, on the side of the printer there's a breakout port for you to plug in your own screen presumably you would be running clipper screen. So yeah, the cat is out of the bag. Someone has finally given us a fully unlocked clipper experience straight from the factory. And yeah, I know Chidi did that as well with the X3 series, although to me, that printer just feels like a proprietary minefield. And the difference with the SK-1 is that it truly feels like a pre-built Voron that was shipped to my house in a box and all I had to do was remove it and print. And Two Trees provides us with quite a few auto calibration features. 
Because each Z corner has a unique motor assigned to it, we do get Z tilt leveling in addition to the obvious bed mesh calibration. Sadly though, the Z offset calibration is not automatic. However, there is a nifty feature and a menu system on the screen that allows you to very easily use the paper method. The SK-1 is going to automatically perform residence compensation with the onboard ADXL1345 and you get LiDAR free flow rate calibration as well. And if you care, you can see the stock printer configuration file on the screen right now in case there's anything that you want to see in specific. So my printing experience with the SK-1 was nothing short of wonderful. Two Trees includes seven PLA slicer configurations for both Cura and Prusa Slicer. And they've also provided the start and end G-code in case you want to use that to create your own custom profile in any other numerous slicing softwares. Because Clipper on this machine is fully unlocked, it's going to be identical to any other custom custom built clipper machine. Essentially, you're gonna slice the file, drag and drop it into the web interface, and then you'll right click the file in the browser and click the print button. So I performed five, eight to 12 hour, 12 part prints. I experienced no printing issues and I had no bad adhesion failures. Though I did apply and reapply a hefty coating of Vision Miner's nanopolymer, though I'm not sure it was necessary, definitely a fantastic product. My only modification to the slicer profile provided was that I changed the models to have a solid infill. All of these models are purely geometric, which is gonna require a significant amount of acceleration and deceleration. And one thing that I am really excited to see is that all of the corners are very sharp. All of the layers stack beautifully and ultimately this printer instilled me with a significant amount of confidence to perform a print job of any length. So I wanted to also check the fine details of models that were more of an organic shape. To do this, I printed a massive Spider-Man bust. For this particular print, I was also required to make one slicer modification and that's because the tree supports were being crashed into by the nozzle during travel moves. The simple simple and quick fix was that I stole these Z-hop values from the standard bamboo profile and after I did that everything printed fine and successfully. At 80 microns this might be the single most beautiful FDM printed object that I have ever printed and I... <laughs> I don't know, I'm kind of speechless. The, the results are absolutely fantastic. And I feel so bad because there's absolutely no way that I will ever be able to do this printed model justice with the current lenses that I own. This Spider-Man bust truly looks like an injection molded part, but it was 3D printed. Look, I promise it's 3D printed. I haven't even removed the tree supports yet because Honestly, with the tree supports, it almost looks like a work of art. It is seriously difficult to make a review video about a printer when practically every single part of the printer is just this close to perfection. To put this into perspective for you, if I was to write a review video about my X1 Carbon today, this printer and this review would be just as difficult as the X1 Carbon review. The simple fact is that nearly everything I did with this printer operated so well and provided me with an absolutely incredible and wonderful experience. And the thing is, Two Trees isn't doing anything new here. There's no game breaking technology. But this is the first time that premium technology and premium hardware have been combined into a single package with a fully open source, fully unlocked clipper experience and everything was just done correctly. And now is probably the time when someone like Albert from 247 Printing is gonna step in and contradict nearly everything I've said with his highly technical and highly professional mechanical engineering background. No, I'm not making a joke, I'm being serious. But I promise I stand by absolutely everything that I have said in this video. At the moment, the SK-1 is the closest thing that you will find to a custom built Voron that has been translated into the mass market. And guys, please don't forget that just recently I posted a fairly negative review about a Kickstarter campaign that actually sponsored me and actually paid me money, yet Two Trees hasn't even paid me a single dime to make this video. After hearing that, I hope that you can trust and have faith in everything I've said. So I have been using the phrase close to perfect and that implies issues exist. Well, obviously issues exist because nothing, I don't think, can ever be perfect. 
there is always going to be room for improvement. But I will say the issues with the SK-1 are quite honestly minuscule and really there's nothing that we haven't seen before. So the first and the worst is going to be the printing volume. So unfortunately the SK-1 is without a doubt the absolute loudest printer that I own and that even predates the motor silencing firmware upgrade that the X1 Carbon just recently got. The max volume that I clocked this printer at is 68 dB, and while that is a peak value, the running average for this printer is somewhere between 62 and 65 dB. Given the fact that, at the moment, there is not an enclosure on this machine, it is entirely, entirely too loud to be within the vicinity while it's printing if you're trying to do anything with your ears. So the saving grace here is that Stealth Chop is enabled on Z, but it is completely disabled on both the A and the B motors. So if the volume of this printer is of importance to you, there is a very real possibility that you can tune that volume down at the cost of speed and potentially a slight amount of accuracy. If you are interested in learning more about this though, please go check out 3D Printing SOS because this kind of thing really is his bread and butter. So I have had a couple issues with the extruder as well, though nothing super significant. Unloading filament on the SK-1 has unfortunately caused my extruder to clog not once, but actually twice. And while that is annoying, what made it even worse is that the hot end, it is assembled entirely with microscopic Phillips head screws. This makes, hold on, hold on. Absolutely no sense. Why would you do that? Why? I have already lost one of these screws and if I continue to lose more, I will not be able to assemble the tool head and I, I'll be at a loss. I will have absolutely no idea what to do. And the last issue that I have actually doesn't really directly involve the SK-1, rather it's a two trees issue entirely. So I sadly confirm that two trees has no intention of releasing an AMS unit, at least not in the foreseeable future. And with a printer that is as good as the SK-1 with as much praise as I've given the SK-1, this seems like an absolutely monstrous oversight. This printer, it's wonderful. I really, really love the SK-1. This is kind of like the Apple and the Android debate. You see, if you want a bamboo product, you're probably not gonna change your mind. So you may as well just go on and buy a bamboo product, which is a great product. But if you're in the market for a clipper-based speedy core XY machine, I'm telling you right now, this is the best option that you have available. So if you plan to purchase this machine or if you plan to do some additional research, please guys, I have an affiliate link in the description. It helps the channel out at no cost to you. If you use that link, I would greatly appreciate it and all the funds that come from affiliate links go directly back into the channel to help grow and expand our reach and of course our quality. So I cannot believe that it took nearly two years after Bamboo's launch in order to get a clipper-based Core XY that is this good. But I am very glad that we've made it and I sincerely hope that this is not a one and done from Two Trees because they have knocked this out of the park. Two Trees has really outdone themselves here and honestly, they deserve all of the credit that they can get. What is up with all of this? Because YouTube is telling me that 95% of you watching this video right now, you're not subscribed to the channel. I don't even know how that's possible. When my grandmother starts laughing at me, that's how I know that we've got a problem. So please go ahead, go down there. Hit the like and uh, don't forget that subscribe button as well because I want my grandmother to stop laughing at me.